right. Colleen. Um, yes. Okay, I think we're ready if you are. Okay, I am. And I uh, wanted to say thanks to everyone today for uh, joining us for the power of online marketing for attracting and keeping customers. We uh, apologize for being just a few minutes late, um, but uh, we're very happy that you could join us today. Lisa? Lisa? Oh. Welcome to GoToWebinar, Web Events Made Easy. That we sent via email, or you can call 800 982 9862, extension 225, and ask for help. And today we have as our speakers for this uh, webinar, we have Lisa Jones, who is president of Business Direct Marketing, as well as John Kendall, who's our online marketing specialist here at Business Direct Marketing. And just a few um, items of housekeeping before we get started. Um, we'll have all phone lines will be muted during the presentation. Um, you can uh, submit questions or any comments during the session uh, via chat. And at the end of the presentation, we'll hold a, a Q&A session to uh, take those questions. And Lisa, to you. Thank you, Colleen. Well, again, I would like to um, let everyone know we're so happy that you could join us today. And we're going to be sharing some helpful tips and information on how you can attract customers online and once you get them, how you can keep those. And so it's all about attracting customers and, and, and retention. And so today we're going to look at what is the consumer's roles that they go through when they're trying to make a decision on where to buy, who to buy from. And so we're going to take a, a typical consumer here in the uh, heating and cooling industry. And this is Joanne. Meet Joanne. So she wakes up today in the middle of the night, and her air conditioner is broken. It's really hot and she needs to get it fixed now. She has family coming over for the weekend, and she needs to know who to call immediately to help her out. So in the old days, she would typically go to the Yellow Pages or the newspaper, but today a common thing that we're seeing happen is Joanne pops over quickly to her Facebook and reaches out to all of her friends and says, hey, does anyone have any good recommendations for me? I need a repairman for my air conditioner. Help. And so today's form of word of mouth is still existent, but it's online, whereas it used to be you'd go uh, ask your neighbors or, or people in the local town. You're doing basically the same thing, but you're going online to do so. From there, Joanne jumps on Google does a little bit of Google search. She enters in air conditioning re repair, Dallas, Texas, pops up several different possibilities for her. So as she's reading those, of course, she sees a lot of them listed in Google Places where you see the letters A, B, C, D, E, and F. She clicks on some to check out a, key, a few companies that look promising. So you might ask yourself, how many people are really, really looking for information, recommendations from could be even strangers online? Well, the statistical fact studies that we're seeing now is showing that 90% of the people trust recommendations, of course, from their friends, and an additional 70% of the people believe the consumer opinions that are posted online. So you can see how powerful online recommendations and testimonials truly, truly are. So Joanne put this step into further action. She went to Yelp, which is one of the local online directories I'm sure you've heard of, and begins to read remarks about the different companies. So she sees 
a company that keeps showing up with reviews and um, not very far from where she lives. So she reads a little bit about Quigley. Then she quickly goes over to their website. She sees they have a nice, attractive, professional website. It's got information about different offers. And she also sees testimonials from current customers. So as she's reading and evaluating a little bit more in depth about who to call and why should I call them, she's really doing her homework and her research. Because after all, this is someone that she's going to have come into the privacy of her home. And so consumers are very, very careful today about looking for companies, finding companies, and learning more about them before they ever, ever pick up the phone to call someone. So she notices this particular local company. She even recalls receiving a direct mail piece from them with a service offer of $25. And so now she's prompted. She feels confident about her decision. She gives them the call. The nice um, service technician comes over and helps them, helps her with her problems right away. And she's able to implement um, her coupon, her $25 coupon that she found online. And she's very, very happy. So this is one experience how quickly this experience could create a customer for a lot. So she loves Facebook, right? Because that's where this whole press started. So she went to the company's Facebook page. She liked their page. And now that she is a loyal customer, when other friends ask for recommendations, she knows who that she can mention. And so as we're seeing more and more today in marketing, as the whole environment has changed, that's how we gain customers and keep customers, truly, you've got to learn to be a jack of all marketing trades. So, one simple buying decision that we saw from Joanne turned into multiple channels, from her going online to doing directory reviews and searches, um, looking at direct mail that she has. So if you currently are not implementing a really strong online and offline program with cross-media and cross-channel marketing, you're probably missing a lot of value valuable opportunities. So let's take a look at some other online marketing strategies that can help you to get there. And so now, John, if you yeah. would um, share some more with our listeners today on getting found online. Perfect. And you did great, Lisa. And we want to continue that step online. And something people don't understand is just as you've built a website, that alone doesn't give you traffic or leads or business. You have to create what we use a SEO or search engine optimization so that when people are searching online on Google that you're popping up. And so that's something that we need to be targeting. Next is that online marketing. Here's just some simple facts. 97% of Americans use the Internet to shop online. And then out of these 90%, are looking for brick and mortar stores, they're searching for it, and then they actually come into your location. If it be them coming to you or you going out to them. Some statistics to touch on, 74% of these are looking for local searches. So it's normal. We live in a world of instant gratification where even what might be a block down the road or a mile down the road, we'll actually Google Best Buy or AC Repair before we actually go out to the location. And then the key thing is, top five spots in Google get 50% of all the business. And that means the rest of the company, if there's five or 200 companies, they're all fighting over that last 50%. And so it's essential that you do have a strong online presence that you're part of that top 50%. And going on to the next one, tips for improving this. You know, SEO, if you're not familiar, that's that search engine optimization. Key keyword rich information. I can't emphasize the math that. Now, an uh, example is not a lot of people will actually spell out air conditioning or HVAC. What they'll type in is just the letters AC 
and repair in Dallas or Wisconsin and Florida, whatever city they're living in, they'll go about that. So you need to be targeting words that people are actually searching. And there's a free tool that you can do that. It's called Google Keyword Tool. And you actually can find out the keywords that people are searching in your area. And you need to use simple to understand URLs to convey that content very easily for people. What I mean by that is you want it to help them out in a, a vast variety of ways that they don't need to be digging what I call long tail phrases. Just very simple, that AC repair in you know ABC city. One of the simple things you can do about that is in regards to local searches. You've obviously we know of Google Places, but there's Manta, Merchant Circle, Angie's List, Yelp, Super Pages, Dex Knows. And these directories are what helps you get to that first page of Google. That's why 70% of all online activity is related to local searches. And going to this next slide, Google Places, if you haven't done it yet, it's essential that you claim your Google Play. I can't emphasize the word, it's free. Now even though it's free, it does take time to do that. What I mean by that is you claim your Google Play. Once you do that, you need to put in your name, at this phone number, and then it allows you to put in categories that you represent. Multiple people that Lisa and our company have helped out have found out they were falling under the category of plumber or construction worker because Google just will sometimes get unless you go out of your way to claim your Google Place. And those are just simple little things to make sure your name, address, phone number are correct, you're under the right categories, you have right keywords associated with not only you, but you need to be specific on the cities that you serve. AC repair is too generic. You need to say AC repair Dallas, AC repair Madison, Wisconsin. And those are the little things that you can do so that you're popping up into that top five listings, and that's really who's getting all the business. So here's some of the tips to help you with this. You know, when you set up that page profile, be very thorough. Do some Google keyword tool research. Uh, it will actually break down how many people are searching specifically each month for those phrases. Uh, make sure your company contact information is consistently correct. What I mean by that is there are over 120 directories out there, and if one of your addresses is off or it doesn't fill it out, it doesn't add the area code or zip code, those little things are inconsistent. Or if you've moved locations, Google, if you have two different locations, Google doesn't know which one to put up and so they're competing against each other. So we would rather put someone that has their information, their map, name, address, phone number correctly, and it'll actually put, head, put them ahead of you. So you can be posting videos, be linking it to your Google Places, there's coupons, and update, update your page often. Make sure if there's any new product or service, if you do air duct work, cleaning, uh, maintenance plans within the AC industry, make sure that's included in, in everything that you're operating. And then getting your listed directories online. Now we mentioned that there's a, thing, a few different things you can do. Uh, after this webinar, you can request. We can give you a report where we talk about directories that you are and are not in. Or you can go and search your company. And something that you need to realize, you'd be surprised. A lot of these super pages, local.com, Judy's book, Yahoo, they have just generically put you in an industry. So unless your company has AC repair in it, a lot of times Google won't put you in that category. So you need to make sure that it's done correctly and all of these different things. This just shows you an example. All these different directories allow you to put in a lot of rich keywords to make you pop up higher. You know, take advantage of that. Categories, keywords, I can't emphasize enough of that because that's really who's popping up is you don't want to when it says Put a description. One of the worst mistakes I see is you say, I've been in business for 15 years, I'm married, I have two kids, and a dog and a cat. That's not what people are searching. You just want to be, I would tell people, Google doesn't have eyeballs, but it can do one thing really well, and that's read. So you just need to put AC repair, Dallas, Texas, HVAC dealer in the Dallas area, uh, heating, and, heating and AC services, maintenance plans for AC repair in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 
You want to be very specific, and those are the things that will push you ahead and get you to that top five placement. And moving on to the next slide. Uh, social media marketing, this is something I understand when I meet with a lot of you. You just say, I hate it. I'm not on Facebook. I never want to be on Facebook or Twitter and so on. I always tell people, it's okay if you're not, as long as you understand the rest of the world is. We're close to 900 million people are out there. And as Lisa mentioned, Facebook, I call it word of mouth on steroids. It's just something, a beast that you have to deal with, but you don't have to be as active as you may think. Some of the things that you can do is create an opportunity to become the expert in your city, in your field. So it's not just post every day. You don't need to post every day. I tell people to post anywhere from two to five times a week. And it's okay if you're posting twice a week. But be there for information. Say, have you checked your filters lately? Um, when was the last time you had your thing serviced? I give them recommendations with their sprinkler system around their with their HVAC products that are going to be surrounding the home. And these are simple things that you can be educating, and people love to work with an expert, not just someone that says 10% off, 20% off, 50% off. Uh, they know that there's deals out there, but they, they, they respect someone that knows what they're talking about. And so make sure that you're creating the social media marketing, and even if you aren't going to be active, they, it's essential that you have it plugged into your website because you are actually rewarded by having those links correctly set to your website, the Facebook, the Twitter, the YouTube, the LinkedIn, having that blog, it's like giving your website a heartbeat, and it's something that will help you, even if you're not going to be extremely proactive, have those things in place, because you don't know when one or the other will take off for your business. And going to the next slide, blog, those that may not be familiar with this, this is probably number one or two of the most powerful ways to get your website to pop up higher. And those that aren't familiar, you don't have a separate website of your blog. You actually want a blog integrated into your website. And what it is, it's an opportunity to continually to put fresh content out there, to tell stories about your business, establish credibility, you know, ask your customers what they're talking about. But what it is, is if you can at least do it twice a month, uh, Phenomenal if you could do it four times a month. What this is, is a company we've helped out before, is when your website stays stagnant, Google has no idea if business is good. You could be a $100,000 business or you could be a $10 million business. When you blog, that's the way Google goes, wow, if you could only be blogging on your website if things were good. And so it's one thing, it's fresh content, it's activity on your website, it creates conversation, and all the things and also indexes your website for more pages. Every time you blog, that's a whole new page that is indexed through the internet. And that's by giving your, your website a, a very strong athletic heartbeat. And those things are extremely, extremely powerful to push you over the edge. So if you haven't yet, make sure you have a blog integrated into your website or build it on a platform that allows a blog to be in your website. Touch on a few things, YouTube. Just some simple statistics, uh, in 2011, YouTube had more than 1 trillion views of, and around 140 views for every person on Earth. I mean, these are just wild statistics. People, we are, again, in a world where people don't like to read as much, and videos are one of the most powerful ways to help your website and for additional pages for you to pop up on that first page. And a few things to know about YouTube. Google owns YouTube, so it refer references it very often. And but also, when people are typing AC repair, and if they see a video pop up on that first page, it's proven they're more apt to actually click on a video than the five or six links or websites that are above that because they would rather watch a 30-second minute video than go to a website and then have to read to find out everything that you offer. So don't be scared of it. I think the next slide will tell us a little more about that in regards to YouTube. You don't need to be scared of it. Uh, Google, I, again, I can't emphasize, it doesn't have eyeballs. It's not going to judge you on how you look, the coloring, the length, the deal you offer. All those things don't come to play. All that Google can do, it reads the title that you name that YouTube video. So something that we had to help them with with an AC, they put testimonial as the title. 
and then they did another video and they typed it testimonial two. Well, if you're looking for HVAC, you're not going to look for a YouTube video that says testimonial. So you need a title with rich keywords. It needs to be AC repair in ABC City. It needs to be HVAC dealer, uh, train dealer. All these things are essential when you're creating that YouTube video. It's all the words, how you title it, and it allows you to put a few meta tags in a small description. That's where the rich keywords come into play, and that's how you can really dominate one for your website, helping with your social media, and a lot of people realize YouTube is a social media outlet, and then also it's helping just with your Google placement because it's finding a Google reference one because it's the second most powerful search engine out there. Um, tag, 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 tag. Can't emphasize that enough. Pro promote your YouTube video pages. So through a blog post, so you have two ways you can do it. Do a video and then post it on your blog. Then there's actually other uh, video sites out there. There's Daily Motion. There's Metacast. There's actually over about 10 really good video sites that you and, I, you and I may not talk about much, but Google does reference them. So find those other places that you can post your video, and all those things are helping ge generate traffic to your website. So Facebook, as I mentioned a little earlier, you know, you're close to 900 million people on Facebook. It really is. I've, I've always believed and always think word of mouth will always be the best. If my neighbor while mowing my lawn recommends something, there's a good chance that I'll follow through with that. Well, when I'm at home or my wife is at home, we naturally are on our iPhones, we're on Facebook, and if someone recommends something or brings up a question and it's very fresh in my mind to, one, bring up a certain company or someone references a certain company, I mean, it's word of mouth on steroids. I don't have a lot. I think I have about 520 friends on Facebook. Every time I post something, that's going to 520 people. You know, you want to build that herd. It's very valuable for your company. If you can create, you know, your 100 or 400 clients that all follow you on Facebook, I mean, once you've built them up, you know, that's kind of free marketing. It's a very uh, large asset to have with your Facebook. So do commit. I know you may not like it, but it's very powerful. So things with tips with Facebook, you know, but make sure you're not pushy. I, I know there's a lot of people, and I don't like to reference all these, but a lot of people that maybe do multi-level marketing, and it's just every day, 10% off, 10% off, buy one, get one free, 10% off, 20% off, and it's just sell, 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 sell. You've got to engage. Google actually doesn't reward you. A lot of people at the beginning thought, if the more you post, the, the more you pop up. And that's just the contrary. It's actually good conversation. So if you post something, and two or three people make a comment, Google goes, wow, when you post something, people actually are engaged and wanting to hear what you have to say, and it will actually show it to more people because it's assuming that if people want to see what you're talking about. But if you post 20 things and not one person makes a comment, Google will actually not even show it to all your likes because it goes, oh, people don't even want to see what you're talking about. So it's okay, you know, to uh, you know, trickle a few running special promotions in there, um, but really educate, educate. I mean, you don't. It doesn't always have to be about your business. You can share spiritual thoughts. You can do jokes. You can have little contests, things that are just creating engagement, and that will strongly help your Facebook presence. Again, it's just that heartbeat, and you want that Facebook link to your website. If it's not, you're literally having two different entities fight against each other. So you want to make sure all the effort and energy you put into Facebook is reciprocated over to your website. And then next one, Twitter. This is something I know a lot of you may not be familiar with. There's a few different things that I encourage. One is called Tweet Deck. I, I always re reference Batman the movie. If any of you have seen Batman, towards the end of the uh, first Dark Knight Rises, um, Batman goes into his cave and he can actually see everyone's conversations on the phone. Uh, anyone that has technology, he can actually listen in. You might not know this. With Twitter, you actually have that capability. You, if you go to TweetDeck, it's a free service. When you put it onto your computer, you can actually set up keywords that send you a message anytime someone types something in. So if someone types in AC repair, in a certain geographical area, it could be 50 miles or 100 miles, and someone types in AC repair, 
it will actually send you a message and say, someone just mentioned this word, AC repair. And right away, you can send them a tweet back going, oh, by the way, we're offering 20% off on AC in your area. Oh, I can see you have a big concern. We can be out there in 30 minutes. It's a very, very powerful tool, and you're going to see more and more people taking advantage of it. But again, it's one of those things you have an opportunity to just educate. And believe it or not, Twitter is really good for actually following your competitors, or I like to use just people in your same industry. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of synergy, believe it or not, comes through Twitter with people in your same industry. So, you know, if nothing else, just have it implemented into your website because it's a very authoritative link. What I mean by that is, you know, if you've ever had an SEO website contact you, everyone says, oh, I can get you 100 links to your website or 500. Well, if they're very poor links, it doesn't do anything. But if it's a very powerful or authoritative link, that kind of pulls you up the rankings. And Twitter is that a very authoritative link. So even if you're not going to be proactive, have Twitter linked to your website. So going on. Thank you, John. That was so, so helpful. And I, I know um, the power of social media is, is very good for um, your online presence. And as John says, building your awareness as a brand expert and reaching out and making those connections and creating relationships. And so once you've done that, you've obtained customers, the next element is retention of those customers and staying in touch with the customers and keeping them coming back time and time and time over. And so one thing that's so often overlooked, I can't tell you how many companies that we talk to on a weekly basis that do not really capture the data from their website, they do not capture the emails from their existing customers when they're going out even doing service calls or implementing ESAs. Oftentimes, they uh, miss this category of capturing emails and cell phone numbers. And it's so, so important of knowing who your consumers are and to be able to stay in touch with them in the future. And so what we want to do is share a few easy, easy tips of how you can capture this data. And then once you capture it, what additionally you can do with it. So on your website, make sure you have a con contact form of some type to where they can enter in their information. Maybe it's where you click on service now or contact us now for sure. Um, collect their email and cell phone number and their address information if possible as well. Um, transaction forms are a good opportunity to collect that. There are a lot of forms online for electronic payments that you could have on your website to be sure that you capture it there. Contests and giveaways. Creating relationships is, like John mentioned, it's not just always, always, always offer, 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 product, product, product. Do engagement with your community with different kinds of contests and sweepstakes to create attention in different unique ways to capture that information. Even referrals, asking for referrals and requests and Always attempt to survey your customers. Find out um, what size home they live in, when their next remodel is planning. That information is so, so beneficial, especially when your sales or service technicians go out. So they have relevant knowledge of who the customer is and obtaining and keeping that um, relationship. So. One easy, easy implementation is email marketing. And um, contrary to the, the popular belief that email is, is falling, it's actually just the opposite because email is one of the strongest, strongest opportunities to reach out to your customers in a very, very gentle way that can cut just straight through all the clutter and end up on their desk or right on their desktop and enables you to have a chance to make sure that your message is seen. And so when you're doing a marketing campaign, 
Um, maybe you're announcing about fall tune-ups, the fall maintenance. Um, maybe it's, it's even a, a newsletter of information about your company. Make sure that you have email implemented. The great thing about it is it's so measurable. You can tell how many people opened it, um, the pages that they clicked through. So it gives you some very, very valuable information. Always, always, always attempt to gather mobile phones. Mobile phones is one of the future growing um, fast, fast way, especially with the smartphones today. They're like in, in everyone's hand. It's their computer, it's their phone, it's their video camera. Their life exists into this phone. So if you can get into their phone, and be where they are, you're much more apt to get responses. Just as far as um, text messaging, the auto industry does a really, really great job of this, is sending out a text message saying it's time for your service repair. Same element could pertain to um, your industry as well. And the beauty about it is that consumers are four times more apt to respond within minutes. And 91% of them are going to respond with one hour. So text messaging, even versus voicemail today, is so, so much stronger and higher. And so it gives you such a good opportunity to create those existing relationships and strengthen them. So what we'd like to do here is to show you a great example of a case study this is a company called ETR, and they implemented a cross-media marketing campaign that was um, consistent of their online marketing, starting with their website, which, which we built and implemented for them. Um, complete. This is a direct mail campaign. And so this shows you an idea. They've got a great offer on the front. And then also, they're giving away Dallas Cowboy tickets. So no matter what part of the country you're in, you could do the same type of um, contest or sweepstakes or drawing. So you can see the QR on the page here. Well, first name is, is throughout. So research study shows us if you see your name in print, you are three times more apt to stop and read it. And so we've got the QR code here so they can click with their mobile phone. Or if they don't have a smartphone, there's a URL that goes directly to a customized microsite just for that consumer to register for the Dallas Cowboy tickets. This is the back side of the card. So you can see it's got financing offers, it's got service offers even have some offers on ESA agreements because we all know we would like to establish those and, and grow that base. And so there's numerous call to action. So the goal here is to peak the interest of the consumer and give them multiple, multiple ways to connect with you. Because you've got your consumers that just want to pick up the phone and call you. Phone number's there. Some people just want to go to your website boom, the website's on here, or maybe they've got their smartphone and they just love to click it. I know I do when I get mailings or something, I'm in a hurry, I don't have time to read it, so I click that QR. It's in my phone, so later on that day or that week, I can go back to that references and um, have that company's information stored into my phone. And so this is the example of um, all the different elements that are multiple calls of action as well as personalized and variable to create that relationship of the consumer with you and your company. So you're no longer just an unknown company. You are a person speaking directly to another person by first name basis in the beginnings of the relationship. So what does the consumer do? as we saw that Joanne did in the beginning of the presentation, quickly goes to the website, and on the website reads more information about the company, finds out testimonials, and also can see 
she can click to register right here on this button for the Dallas Cowboy entries. This goes to a microsite which is going to allow the information on these consumers on the web as well as from the direct mail piece that they receive to populate and register for the Dallas Cowboy tickets. So I'm going to pop to the microsite just real quickly and show you the experience that that consumer will have. So it pops up to the microsite, tells them a little bit more about the campaign and promotion, and gives them a chance to register to win. And so right here you'll see it's going to quickly gather some survey information from the consumers of um, about your home, what age is your home, how many, um, are you planning on upgrading the system, are you interested in maintenance, repair, what's going to trigger your interest, is it rebates, is it reputation, and are you, how likely are you to select which product you're going to select, and um, a very important question, do you currently have someone that services you, yes or no? So this gathers the valuable information, populates to that contact information, which we mentioned to gather their first name, last name, of course, populate the address, phone numbers, and emails. So now we've captured valuable, valuable information that's going to allow us to reconnect with them on an ongoing basis. So let me get back to the, the presentation here. And this is just another visual of that contact form. So whether you have it populating directly onto your website in the contact information, or you have it specially go to an additional site for registration for a special promo. But the most important thing is gathering those email addresses and cell phone addresses to utilize in the future. This populates back immediately a thank you email to the consumer that now we've gathered it, letting them know that they have indeed registered and will be in touch with them in the future. So they can also remind them here, if you shared this offer on Facebook or Twitter or refer a friend, they're going to receive an additional 15 entries. So we want to incentivize them to talk about our company, talk about our campaigns. And just like John said, he has 500 friends on Facebook. Just by this particular consumer clicking on the Facebook share, now this offer goes to everyone on their Facebook and it gives the expandability of a promotional campaign that in the past would stop at the door with snail mail, now is a cross channel with online website applications. It's got Facebook shares, Twitter shares, and you may ask, so what, what are the results? What can this do for the company and how did this turn out? So case study sh shows the leads from combining the offline and online marketing increased by four times over using one form of marketing only. And you can only imagine the opportunities that that does for sales opportunities by implementing and incorporating cross-media campaigns. Generating those leads, adding to the database is going to give future opportunity for multiple channels. And email marketing combination, as you know, is very inexpensive, but you can only do it if you capture that information. So implement a program that's fun, that's inviting, and is not only just sell, sell, sell. And so in wrapping this all up, how do we tie all this together? Because it does seem overwhelming and a lot of information. But the most important element is if you've got a limited budget, which most companies in today's market and environment are, cover very, very well two categories. Your online with that website and your Google Places and your SEO, your optimization of keywords, like John had mentioned, 
as well as those key targeted neighborhoods and communicating. You know where they are. You know where you want to become the dealer of choice. So help consumer find you in multiple, multiple ways. So in just a moment, we're going to go to question and answers and why we're getting those together. Um, I do want to let you know that we are offering a free SEO assessment of your own website. So if you want to take a peek to see how well it's performing, um, this is free for those of you who want to shoot us over an email or give us a call. And it is limited to the first 25 requests. And it's so, so valuable um, to learn this information. So I guess now what we can do, Colleen, let me, um, let me get this mic to where we can hear you. And okay. let's see what questions we have. OK. Um, thanks very much, Lisa and John. That was um, great information that you shared today. Um, the first question that we have, um, was I think uh, for John when you were talking about Twitter and Tweet Deck, I think um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, and it and is it is it Tweet Deck? Uh, the uh, person could not hear you, so if you could address yes. that. Yes, great question. It is Tweet Deck, D E C K, and a little more about that is you can actually set up different categories within that. Where What I mean by different categories, if you wanted one to be only associated with sports criteria, or obviously in this industry, you'd want to say, I want everyone that's in the HVAC industry, I want their information when at certain people. So if you could pick, you can actually already say, I don't care who they are. When these 50 or 100 people say something, I want to be notified, because they might only write something once a week or once a month. Then you can have another, another category that is just open to the public that you say, if they mention the word AC repair, I want to be notified. And then it, can, it will send you a message through your Twitter. You can have it synced into with your email, I believe. And it's always updating. And TweetDeck keeps coming out with a new software completely free that it can just send you a message. And it says, someone at 2 AM just mentioned the word ACE to repair. They could have said, oh, my air conditioning, or use the word air conditioning. My air conditioning just went out. Uh, this, I hate when this happened. All of a sudden, I assure you, they'd be extremely impressed if within five minutes or even a half an hour, you sent a message back in regards to that. So it's something you're going to see growing. Obviously, some of those in it, maybe a smaller demographic uh, or geographical area, it might not be as prominent. But if you were close to a big city, this is something you're going to see a lot of. But great question. OK. Um, thanks very much, John. Um, our next question um, that we have is about how often um, should a website be updated? Would John, you like do you, I don't know if you want to take that. Uh, and something with, in regards to updating your website, it's not that you need to make it look different or new criteria. The simplest way to do that is just having a blog integrated into your website. And so it's a page. You have your home page, about us, products and service, and then one of them should be blog and the next one like contact us. So ideally, you should be doing it at least twice a month. You should be blogging. And it doesn't need to be long. It could be a video blog, or it could be just a paragraph. So I would encourage you should do it at least twice a month. Um, if you're doing it four times a month, you're doing a blog post. I mean, that's amazing, phenomenal. And worst case, if you're not doing it once every other month, it, you're just really behind the eight ball. OK. Um, thank you. Um, another question that we have is about, uh, can you talk a little bit more about videos and how they can help uh, me to get found online better? Yes. Yeah. So uh, videos, you can understand, you know, we have, and even though I keep using the word Google, I, I'm referencing the entire in internet. If you were to take all searches, about 87% of all searches, that includes Yahoo, Bing, Ask, uh, all of these different ones, 
87% of all searches in the whole country come through Google. And what that includes is YouTube because Google owns YouTube. And so the simple things that you could do is have a, vid a, a video on your home page, which when people go to your web page, have a video maybe that starts up and says, hey, welcome to my website. We are a family-owned business. We're here to serve you. Go ahead and look through our website. Let us answer questions. The best thing you can do is call and have one of our service techs come and uh, speak to you specifically. Because if you have that written somewhere in your website, they're not that very likely to read it. People usually, if they go to your website, the average time on a website is nine seconds. And that's across the board. When they go to your website, they're looking for name, address, phone number. But if you have a video, people will watch that. Or if they did a search for AC repair and they saw a video pop up, people might think it's a video to do it yourself. And so all of a second they click on it and you show a video that says, you know, DIY, do it yourself. Hey, this is ABC HVAC company. Uh, we want to teach you how to do it yourself. Make sure you check your filters every three months. Uh, make sure you have a service tech come out every six months. And if you need more information, call us at, you know, at 888, so on, so on, so on. People, it's, I can't emphasize enough, people are very more willing to watch a video than to read an article. So it's good for Google because the, the words need to be out there. But if you want people actually to be engaged into your website or online, it's through video that you're going to get that message across. But great question. I'm glad you asked. Thank you. Um, another question is, I mean, so we've talked a lot about, or you've talked a lot about search engine optimization, and, you know, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming to people. I think, what what do you think will help the most uh, with organic search placement? To, just to get somebody started, what, what, what do you think they ought to do first? Uh, I'll, I'll answer it. I would suggest one of two things. One is blogging is just extremely, extremely powerful. And the other one is online directories. To give you a little bit of the algorithm that Google is referencing, it's looking for this criteria. So if I type in AC repair in Dallas, it obviously, no one would use Google if it popped up at an AC company in Florida and I typed in AC repair in Dallas, Texas. So the first thing Google has to do, it needs to make sure and it finds a company that's in Dallas, Texas. And how it does that, it actually, Google itself, we were not, refers to Yahoo, to Bing, to Ask. And on top of that, it will actually refer to directories in California, in Wisconsin, in Florida, in New York. And so it's looking for a name that has AC in it, AC repair, and then it's looking for an address that matches Texas or Dallas, Texas. And so the more times you're in there, each time you're in another directory, it's like a brownie point. And so it's like, oh, I found you in Manta, in Merchant Circle, in Yelp, in Yellow Pages, Super Pages, Dexno, so on and so on. The more that you're in, Google goes, wow, I know for a surety that you are an AC company in Dallas. And it moves you up. Where if you're only in three and someone's in 100 directories, Google goes, I would rather put someone that I know without a shadow of a doubt is the content that you're looking for. And that's how people keep going back to Google rather than these other searches. So the breakdown, blogging, or make sure you're in all these directories. I just can't emphasize enough because that's how it it's pulls the local information off that name, address, phone number. Okay, here's here's another question that came in then about um, online directories. I mean, you you mentioned you know being in a hundred versus three. How do you figure out? which directories to be in and, and how do you actually execute on something like that? How can, how can I get that done? Basically? There's, there's a, uh, that's a great question. Um, it, I mentioned a few of the major ones. A lot of them you really just kind of have to hunt them down. You know, the major ones, Manta, Merchant Circle, Yelp, Superpage, Dex Knows. When you go to those, you know, type in your business and see if it pops up and make sure that the category it puts you in. Uh, really, one of it is that if you haven't already, we are to those first 25. We'll actually do a, a very comprehensive SEO report that will actually show you directories that you're in, and it will show you what information is in there. It's really a, you basically have to hunt it down, or we do have a software that it can put you into 140 plus directories, 
and it just goes in and we actually can, it allows us to put you in the categories that you need to, put in the keywords, but a lot of it's just man hours. I mean, our staff, that's what we're doing. When people go, that, that's a little expensive or I'm not sure, I, I, I'll teach you how to do it. I'll tell you all the phrases to put in, but our, you know, business directs have to do that same thing is we have to go actually research the directors you're in, the ones you're not, then we have to research the keywords. You know, you need to go and type in uh, Yelp or Manta or Merchant Circle, go in there, make sure you're in there, and you can, all these directories, by the way, Yellow Page doesn't want to tell you this, you can put yourself in there for free. And Index Nodes and Super Pages, those are all free directories. But you can imagine if just by the time you did it to two or three, it could take you literally 30 minutes to three hours just to put yourself into three or five directories. So it, it's the nature of a beast. It's extremely powerful, but it's just time consuming. If you're a small business and you don't have money, take the time. Start with Google. That's the number one. Then actually go to LinkedIn. Then set up your Facebook, your Twitter, and make sure your name, address, phone number are correct. And you know, even type in on Google, online directories, and see which one pops up. And then research your company, and it, they'll all let you put your information in free. Uh, they say you have to pay. It's not true. That's just for a link. But those are kind of some of the simple steps to get you started. I hope that answers the question. Okay. Um, thanks. Um, if I, I, it doesn't look like there's any more questions coming in. So, and I know that we're about at the top of the hour. So, Lisa or John, um, any you know closing comments and um, for for our audience today? Okay, if I had Pauline, um, I would just like to say really appreciate you all taking the time to join us and please contact us if we can help you in any way to build your online marketing presence and um, help you to grow your business. That's what we're here for. We specialize in the industry. Um, and just remember to, to focus in two very, very pertinent areas from your online market, your online presence, and like John said, if you're not on page one today, you're really not on the web, and targeted communities and neighborhoods that you want to own and be the dealer of choice. And so our numbers are on the screen. You can email or give us a call, and um, we'll help you in any way we can. And thank you so, so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. The organizer.